welcome everybody to a new series we are calling CNC Workbench. This will be a basic series for all woodworkers, CNC woodworkers and non-CNC workers alike. We will strive to educate and entertain. This will be a series that we will be talking about a woodworking shop. Basically, how does your shop benefit by having a CNC router? Well, you need to set up a CNC woodworking shop. The basic CNC machine setup. What equipment you need for your workshop to work with the CNC. For instance, a table saw, a drill press, a band saw, and hand tools. We will be talking about tooling, projects, fixturing, and other related things to CNC. If you have any questions or comments or recommendations for future episodes, please leave a comment in the comment section below or go to www.silverbackwoodworking.com. So let's get started. A few things that I often get asked about CNC machines or routing is, what is a CNC router? Well, a CNC router stands for Computer Numerical Control. What that means is you have a computer that controls the location of your router spindle on the machine. It's wide, 24 inches deep, and 7 inches high. So I can do route anything within that envelope or that space. So I can tell this router bit to go anywhere, this tip, because that's what's going to be doing the cutting, I can tell it to go anywhere in this space by using x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis dimensions or coordinates. So if you would think of our space here has coordinates in it that tell it where X, Y, and Z are at. So, if I would tell the computer, I want this spindle or this tip to move in a Y axis, which is again front to back, all I'd have to do is sit there and tell the machine what I want. So, I could say move to Y1. That's where Y1 is. So it moved to Y1. Okay, let's suppose I want to start carving and I want to go from Y1 to X1. So the spindle is running and I t the computer tells it to go to X1. And it carves while it's doing there. So essentially what I've done is made a slot. But, did I make a slot deep enough? I got to go down some. Let's say I need to go down a half an inch deep. Then I can sit there and say, okay, go a half inch deep. And it went, a ha it went up a half an inch, I'm sorry. I could tell it, go a half inch deep. And it goes a half inch deep. Then I could tell it, hey, go back over to zero because I want to make my slot deeper and move it over to X zero. So now I cut the slot. Now let's suppose I want to go with a slot that comes forward an inch. I would tell it, come minus one. I could cut my slot. So this is how we control the spindle. So consequently, I can carve, I can cut out, I can hollow things, I can do anything that the program tells this spindle to do. Which brings me to the next thing that I'm asked all the time. Can this improve my woodworking? Oh, without a doubt. I happen to be a person that I can't carve to save my life. Well, with a CNC I can carve. With a CNC I can turn. 
with a CNC, I can do a lot of skills that I'm not really very good at. And I can do it accurately, and I can repeat it. Let's suppose I'm making short little spindles, kind of like this guy here. And I want to make 25 of these. It's easy. Load it in, put my blank in, put it on my rotary axis, turn them out, and they'll all be exactly the same. The only thing that limits you with a CNC is your imagination and your envelope. Remember, our envelope or our space, our box that we can work within. But, quite honestly, I have made pieces that are longer than my envelope. I've made them wider than my envelope. I've made them taller than my envelope. And the way I've done that is I make it in multiple pieces and then I glue it all together. It's one way you can get around some of the limitations. Again, your creativity is the only thing that limits you, is your creativity. The particular machine, I get asked a lot of times, you know, what machine do you recommend? Well, my feeling is, is about recommending a machine is... You need to figure out what your needs are. You need to figure out what your needs are. In other words, are you going to do little things or are you going to do big things? That is one of the determining factors. But quite honestly, as far as operations go, that is basically your imagination. How hard is the software to use? Honestly, the software is not bad to use at all. Obviously, it takes a learning curve because it's a new piece of software, but if you've dealt with a paint program or dealt with a program like Corel Draw and also Word and stuff like that, the transition's pretty easy. Now, you can get more difficult software and get easier software. The software I happen to use is Vetrix Aspire. Uh, it's a little on the costly side. But I'm here to tell you, you can do anything you want. Again, it all depends on what you want in the software. And the beauty about these softwares is that you don't have to learn any of the coding. All you do is basically draw out what you want and tell it in some steps how deep you want it to go. Do you want it to be uh, an arch? Do you want it to be a dish? You tell it all of that, and then you tell the machine to process it. And what it does is write the code for your particular machine. Writing that code for your particular machine is called a post processor. Obviously you have to use the right pro post processor so that it works for your machine. Another thing that's really nice is you really don't have to do any of the designing or anything. You can go to uh, nextwaveautomation.com which manufactures my machine and every month they come out with a new project. They give you the files to make the project, there are videos to show you how to make the project and there's instructions on how to make the project. So if you download that stuff you can be making that project within minutes. Within minutes. Not only that, there are other websites that do that. That's one of the things that we're going to offer on our website and through this particular show. Like I said, your imagination is the only thing that stops you or limits you, quite honestly. And in future episodes, we are going to show you how to do fundamental designing in the Vetric software suite. Again, we're just trying to work you up from the from basics on up. The next question I kind of get a lot is, what is the price point? Well, quite honestly, um, it's not exactly cheap. You can get a nice machine that has an envelope that's 12 inches by 16 inches by 4 inches for about $1,500, $1,600. Or if you need something bigger, you can obviously go to something bigger. The particular machine I have is a Next Wave Automation CNC Shark HD4. Uh, it runs right around four or five thousand um, dollars. Again, 
how sophisticated do you want it, what are the dimensions that you need, what are the end products that you want to have. All of these things fit into figuring out how much it costs. But you can get a pretty decent desktop machine from four to seven, eight thousand dollars, which is uh, it's up there. But when you start looking at, you could replace a lathe, you could replace your router table, you could replace a shaper. For the very fact, these are all things that you can do with a CNC router. I could even dimension lumber with it if that's what I wanted to do. Now, obviously, when you start getting out to these specialty machines like planers and joiners and stuff like that, they can do it faster. But I can still do it on my CNC. So quite honestly, what it ends up doing is, is, is it kind of reduces the machines that you need for your shop. I usually sit there and say to people, I could very easily get by with about six machines. My CNC, a table saw, a band saw, a drill press, and a thickness planer. And then use hand tools for everything else. I could very easily do that. So what you can do if you're building a new shop initially, you may want to look at CNC as being your centerpiece. Again, all the machines do basically the same thing. They go Y, X, and Z direction. And within that envelope, that's what we're looking at. That's what we're trying to control. And I don't care who the machine is, they all have to do that same thing. Well, I hope that helps you out, whets your appetite for CNC. Uh, in other parts of this series, we'll get more in depth to uh, machines. We'll get more in depth to our shop and how does a table saw, band saw, drill press, and that stuff relate. We will get into how do you use the software, what softwares do I like, and I use often. We'll get into how do you do designing. Like I said before, I really see the CNC machine being a mainstay in our woodworking shops of the future. I see it being just like a table saw. Everybody's going to probably have one. As I said before, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section at the bottom of this video or leave them on silverbackwoodworking.com. I thank you for uh, your participation. Please support all of our sponsors and subscribe to the newsletter. Again, thank you very much for watching, and as I said before, please support all of our sponsors. They are the ones that are really making this possible for you, so please support them. Well, thank you for watching, and see you next episode.